Grandpa stole his first buggy in 1892. Uh, I met your grandma pig slopping in 46. Oh, every Christmas we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. Oh, have we got a show for you today. Hey, it's nice to have you along. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth on Extreme Genes, America's family history show, the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And this segment is brought to you by LegacyTree.com. I'm very excited to have an old friend on the show, somebody I knew years ago, and we'd run into each other along the way once in a while, but it's been a long time. We're going to talk to Football Hall of Famer Steve Young today for two segments about his ancestry, about his dilemma in writing his autobiography. It is good stuff, and you're going to want to hear this coming up starting in about eight minutes. I also got to give a shout-out to... To our new patron club members from ExtremeGenes.com who have come on. Tom Skinner, James Lee Foster, Karen Ramon, and Steve Lindsay, Randy McKenna. All of you, thanks so much for coming on and supporting the show. And of course, there are a lot of benefits for patron club members, including early access to podcasts, bonus podcasts, and live Ask Us Anything YouTube sessions once a month as well. So you can sign up under patron club at ExtremeGenes.com or go to Patreon.com slash ExtremeGenes and we'd love to have you as part of the show. Hey, don't forget also to sign up for our weekly Genie newsletter. It is available through ExtremeGenes.com. Absolutely free. No, we don't share your email address. We just like to stay in touch. We've got thousands of people already a part of it. Lots of great stories and articles. We'd love to have you on that as well. Right now, let us head out to Boston and talk to my good friend, the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. That's a lot to fit on the business card. It is David Allen Lambert. How are you, Dave? I'm a great friend. How are you doing? Awesome. Boy, this is going to be a big day today, and I'm really looking forward to talking to Steve Young here in a few minutes. Oh, that's excellent. It's it's great to hear in the backstory of how you knew him many, many years ago and how you reconnected. That's a family history story right there for that's future right. generations. Yeah, we will share that uh, coming up here a little bit. Let us get to our family histoire news because we've got a lot of ground to cover today. We do. In fact, my first story is actually a leftover Thanksgiving treat from NEHGS. NEHGS has now put out an online gallery for pilgrim descendants on a website called mayflower.americanancestors.org. This is a place where you can place your own name, photograph, and identifiers on an online gallery connecting you with other descendants of the Mayflower. And participation is free. And I know you're a Holland descendant, Fish, so you need to get on there, too. I have already done it. Oh, excellent. I have done it. Yes, absolutely. And speaking of Howland descendants, by the way, George Herbert Walker Bush, he is one of them, and obviously George W. Bush. But George Herbert Walker Bush, affectionately known as Bush 41 within the family, he made a little news this past week. He did, in fact. He is now the oldest living of all time American president. He surpassed Gerald Ford, who died in 2006, when he reached 93 years and 167 days old. And right behind him, by the way, on his heels is Jimmy Carter, who's, what, just a couple of months behind him, I think? Yeah, Jimmy was born October 1st of 24, and uh, George was born June 12th. So they're, they're, they were babies around the same time, and now very long on the tooth former presidents. Yes. <laughs> My next story deals with your DNA and police. Now, you know, all these people that are testing... And if you get into trouble with the law, well, they have an easy way of getting a hold of you. But the big thing is, do you need to fear that? And does it happen? I mean, I don't see this happening a lot. I don't find people say all of a sudden it would maybe help for a criminal case of maybe you're sadly killed and your body was not found. And maybe DNA will help with that in the CSI sort of sense. But have you heard of anybody or have you had any guests that have had their DNA sequestered for a court case? No, I have not. And I know this is an interesting article and all that. And I think it's just stirring a lot of things up, but it's very, very rare. Most of the companies resist it. And the authorities essentially don't look for it too often. I don't think it's necessarily that they're going to find the DNA of the criminals themselves. But what they might do is match somebody who is tied to that person. Person. So, for instance, maybe there's an aunt who is tested and a nephew gets into trouble. They're able to match to the aunt and then maybe inv- 
investigate within that family circle to find who they're looking for. That kind of thing I could see happening. But I know the companies themselves are resisting this vigorously just to protect the privacy of their customers, you know? That's very true. In fact, I know a lot of times that you hear about the stories about people that have been in prison for decades, and then because of DNA, they find out that they weren't the person who was the criminal to begin with. Yeah, it happens all the time now. Well, you know, speaking of that leads me to our next story with Senator Chuck Schumer, who recently spoke out to the press that he wants to see the Federal Trade Commission look into these DNA companies. He believes that the sensitive information that ends up in third-party companies, he wants to know what they're doing with it, if they're reselling it, etc. So it's an interesting article that was in the New York Times recently. Well, I think they're talking about the idea that if the companies are sharing your raw information, by the way, it wouldn't have any identity associated with it. It's just raw information, perhaps to try to determine health issues that may be tied to your DNA. So we're going to see where this goes. And of course, all of us have privacy concerns these days. But to be honest with you, I'm not that worried about it. No, neither am I. In fact, if you actually submit your DNA to GEDmatch, you can sign off and that allows scientists to look at it. If something in my DNA can help somebody or yes, reconnect somebody, go exactly, for it. Exactly. I think he's just saying that a lot of people don't realize that that's there. But I think with most of the companies, you need to opt in to make mm-hmm. that happen. Well, and speaking of my DNA, which happens to be 39% Irish, that leads me to my blogger spotlight with Jennifer Peace Willis, who has a great blog called Plow and Anchor Genealogy. WordPress.com. She talks about her investigations in her Irish genealogy, which is fascinating. Gives some great examples of what you can do and some of her successes in the field of genealogy. Well, that's about all I have for this week. But remember, if you're looking for that holiday gift, being a member of American Ancestors, you can save $20 on your membership by using the checkout code EXTREME from Extreme Genes and get that gift under the tree virtually that they can use all year long. I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Thanks for letting me share the Family History News with our audience once again. All right. Good to talk to you, David. Thanks so much. And coming up next, he was an all-pro quarterback. In fact, he's the greatest left-handed quarterback in the history of the National Football League. He's a member of the Football Hall of Fame. We're going to talk genealogy with Steve Young coming up next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org/treeapp to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org/treeapp to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. Hi, Genies. It's Scott Fisher, host of Extreme Genes, with an invitation for you to join our brand spanking new Extreme Genes Patrons Club. Now, the Extreme Genes Patrons Club is where, for as little as a dollar a month, Genies everywhere can take advantage of Extreme Genes rewards, such as early access to our latest podcasts, members-only bonus podcasts, acknowledgement on ExtremeGenes.com, and special monthly live online question and answer sessions with well-known family history experts. Catch visits with Genies Genealogy stars such as David Allen Lambert, photo detective Maureen Taylor, DNA expert C.C. Moore, and many other experts and storytellers. If you find yourself craving more stories, more ideas for digging up your dead, more inspiration, the Extreme Genes Patrons Club is for you. The rewards start at just a dollar a month. Find out more now. Just go to ExtremeGenes.com and click on our special Extreme Genes Patrons Club link at the top right. Or go to Patreon.com slash ExtremeGenes. 
Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. It was back in 1982 that I was starting a career as a morning radio host in a little town in Utah called Provo and learning that there was a new quarterback at the university there, Brigham Young University, from my hometown in Greenwich, Connecticut. And I thought, i got to find out who this guy is. So I reached out to him, and over time he became kind of a regular cast member on our morning show, and we became friends, and he bring his lineman over and eat us at a house and home. <laughs> and I have that quarterback on the phone with me right now. He's a member of the National Football Hall of Fame. Steve Young, welcome to Extreme Genes. Scotty, it's been a long time. Great to be with you. <laughs> Great to hear your voice. Your voice is as silky as ever. So, uh, Well, thank I, you, I Steve. That time has treated you well, and uh, it's fun to see what you're doing and, and reconnect. It's, uh, I appreciate you calling in. Uh, it's it's great to hear your voice too, Steve, and to see the influence that I had on you becoming a broadcaster. Yeah, there you go. See, who knew <laughs> that all those tips that you gave me would uh, would pay off? I I don't mean to be a broadcaster, but I don't really get to talk much football at home. My one boy is an entertainer. You know, he loves really? uh, singing. And he's like Dick Van Dyke, and uh, <laughs> you know, he's awesome. And he's uh, leading the play this year again, and he just he wants to make it a profession so it's really cool and then my other boy loves gaming and you know he plays some basketball but no one plays football so I don't get to talk much football at home and so it's nice to be able to go talk for a minute about the game that I loved and enjoyed and all the, especially all the drama around it today. And still do. You know, you've carved such a niche for yourself, Steve, and it was it was very proud for all of us who knew you at that time when you made it into the Hall of Fame and, and your great moments in, in the Super Bowl. And I thought, you know, this is a great time to sit back and reflect a little bit. I mean, they made a big deal at the time, and it's still a big deal. You were the third great-grandson of the man who your school was named after. And, yeah, and Brigham, yeah, Brigham Young. How did that influence you or affect you at that time? You know, I grew up uh, in Greenwich, Connecticut, like you just mentioned. And, uh, you know, I was the only Mormon in 3,000 kids. So it wasn't like, oh, Mormon history, Brigham Young's pioneers going west. I mean, these are kids that grew up in New York City and around New York. Right. You know, it's like it didn't really matter. And so it wasn't a topic of discussion. And I didn't think about it that much, to be honest with you. I always thought it was a neat thing that I was connected and. And my dad would talk about it every once in a while to have a story or two about, you know, Brigham Young when the pioneers would come across the West and come to Salt Lake and no job, no clothes, no, I mean, no, nothing. And Brigham would try to teach them accountability and he didn't have a, there's nothing for them to do. So he had a pile of rocks in his backyard <laughs> and they'd have him, he goes, I need those pile of rocks moved over to the other corner. And he'd never be able to go move them and then he'd feel like, you know, he'd give him some money and. And they felt like they accomplished something. And I always remember that because my dad used that all the time. He's like, oh, you know, you got to move the rock, Steve. Come on, we got to, <laughs> we got to do the work. And uh, so, like in that way, it was an influence, you know. And I don't know. I mean, that might be. I don't know if that story's even true. I mean, my dad made it up, but no, actually, no. Uh, I've heard that myself out there. That was yeah. one of the things he didn't want to give uh, money to any beggar. They'd he'd make them work for it and give them a little dignity. Yeah. Well, as far as that time, the West had not been settled. And he sent families all over the West looking for water coming out of the mountains, and they would establish a community and then good governance. And, and obviously it was a religious thing as well. And from northern Idaho into Wyoming, western Colorado, Nevada, all through Arizona and New Mexico, I mean, a lot of those towns were settled. 
by Brigham Young. Yeah, so that's right. Heck of a thing. Forget about the religious, uh, spiritual part of it. It's just a fundamental what what America looks like today, and and the cities that are there are very much about uh, what Brigham Young was able to accomplish. Absolutely. Now, does that mean more to you now, as you're older and you have your own family, as you look back on your ancestry? Yeah, I think that connections are important. You know, because I now having kids, what you realize is kids come, you know, well developed. In, in their personalities and in their interests, who they are. Yep. You know, uh, it's my theology that they that we live before in spirits uh, in heaven. And so, you know, we develop, and these are not, we don't just wander around, we actually get developed, and that's why we, we come with some sense of uh, person already. And so having kids shows you that there's a connection. There's genes that you pass on, and there's genes that are good and not so good. You know, my, in my book, I talk a lot about anxiety and the anxiety that was genetic in my mom's family. Who knew? Right. You know? so, I, yeah, I wanted so, to get into that with you because you, you had a separation disorder kind of thing, right? Well, it was when as a kid, you know, you self-medicate, right? I just didn't sleep over other people's houses. I, you know, every time it came up to go to scout camp, you know, I'm like, oh, I can't. I got practice, you know. And so you don't really think much about it because you just don't allow it to be a, a part of your life. But you, when you finally have to go away from home, in college, that's when yeah. the truth comes out, and that's when the truth came out for me. I was like, "Whoa, this is!" Uh, and it's a, it's a genetic. I mean, I'm telling you, it's in, it's inside of you. And I didn't know what it was until I was in mid 30s. To be honest with you, I lived with this thing for a long time, and uh, it has challenging aspects to it. And uh, you know, and so we found out that it was genetic in our family and my, my mom's family. And now, knowledge is power. And yeah. in some ways, that's what that's what genealogy really is. One of the great things about genealogy is the knowledge of maybe some things that happened in the in the genetics of the family that can help the genetics today. You know, let alone sure. the connections and the stories and and all the histories that can influence you and uh, to, to the better that you're connected with people that you wish ten generations back could all be sitting in a room. You know, yeah. <laughs> and say, "Oh my gosh, this is great!" And uh, what a what a what a treat that would be. Of course, where, but, uh, where do you think all your athleticism came from? You know, I think it was both my mom and dad. My mom, you know, she has tremendous tenacity, and she also was pretty coordinated. And my dad played football in college, and he was more, you know, I always tell him he was kind of, he was tougher than he was good, you know. And uh, <laughs> that might be a theme for his how, whole life. How does he life, take that? I mean, his, his nickname is Grit, so how does, yeah, he, how does he, he take it. that little shot from his son? He, he, he's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm tougher than I'm good. <laughs> I don't know. <love> <laughs> he's... But he's, uh, I think that in a lot of ways, it's shared genetics on that one. No one can claim it. But, uh, you know, my family, you know, my wife is kind of a great athlete. And so but the kids have chosen all different things. So, um, it, you know, there's a lot of, a lot more things to get, you know, football and baseball and basketball were the things you did. I don't know. What That's else right. was there? Nowadays, holy cow, there's just thousands of sports and thousands of things you can be interested in so well it's interesting i I know our parents knew each other back in greenwich back in the day but you and i were like eight years apart so we really didn't have uh any reason to interact at that point until we both wound up in provo utah at the same time for very different reasons it was it was and it was fun we had a lot of fun back in those days and and you were at the center of an awful lot of it uh because i remember the opening day at Cougar Stadium at that time, and unfortunately, you lost that game. I do remember but, it very uh, well. Oh boy! But there were there were uh, you know a lot of thrills. So I was looking through here, Steve. You know, one of the great benefits I think of being famous is the fact that there are sites that will start to link people who's related to who. So I mm-hmm. looked I looked up uh, your page on here, and, and and maybe these are folks you know about. Maybe they're they're not. Clara Barton. Is your third really? third cousin six times okay. removed the founder know, of the American Red Cross? There uh, you go, Eli Whitney, the inventor of the cotton gin. <laughs> yeah, is... I knew I was smart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, President Franklin Pierce, fifth cousin okay. six All times right. removed. I'm, I'm trying to see if there are any other uh, athletes on here. I'm not seeing a lot of them at this point. Oh, <laughs> Lizzie Borden, she is your sister. Oh, great. Yes, the axe murderer. Thanks so much, Scott. That's just wonderful. I <laughs> and, can't tell you how much I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in a different uh, mindset, Wild Bill Hickok, he was a gunfighter and yeah, an almond. Awesome. So, you know, obviously very competitive. That, that's got to come down your line somewhere. 
Well, that's some place we're all related, Scotty. Yeah, so I just, you know, you're right. Well, Bill Hickok, I'll remember that. I'll remember that. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart is uh, one of oh, your guys. There you go. Wow, look so, at that. Yeah, and uh, let's see the Bushes, George uh, H. W. Oh, there you go. See, I mean, it was a. All that Western, well, that Western blood, I guess. Well, no, this was actually Eastern. It's a guy named Robert Cross uh, oh, okay. who came to Massachusetts in 1634, was uh, the, your common ancestor. With and with okay. me, you and I apparently are ninth cousins. Ninth cousins? Yes. I knew we were tight. We were very tight. I, knew we were tight. <laughs> I think we were tighter than ninth cousins, but nonetheless, <laughs> uh, maybe it's time we actually plan a family reunion and I'll put you in charge of the food. Yeah, can you imagine the numbers of people if we had to connect everyone in between us? Holy oh, yeah. cow. Well, and, you know, and that's what happens. You go back three or 400 years, there's always a way to find a connection. And that's, you know, what should bring more people together, I yeah. think, than is, uh, yeah. you know, happened. I think uh, what you're doing is great. I think, you know, I've seen some TV shows that are doing that. I just, I think that people would just don't even, they want a sense of connection. That's just so natural. Yeah. And to have that, to, and there's so many people that are unconnected in today's world. And displaced away away from family. They don't have a nuclear family that they've grown up with or been around. And so that sense of connection is huge, huge. Well, and it would make a whole difference in the world right now, especially when you look at the uh, political divisions in our country and the uh, the ethnic and racial divisions around the world. When you get down to it, it's just like uh, A.J. Jacobs' new book talks about, I mean, the difference between one person and another, no matter where they are in the world, is like one in a thousand because right. our DNA is 99.9% the same. Right. Amazing. And it was it was that one thing that allowed you to throw a football left handed as far as far as you were able what to do it. What is that all about? I don't know. I don't know. You got lucky, my friend. Hey someone told me the other day that there's not a left handed quarterback anywhere in the NFL. Uh and I just can't believe that. That's crazy. That's nuts. Right now? Really? Yeah, right now there's not a lefty in the league. When I was at BYU the coach told me uh, crazy. Doug Scoble, he's since passed away, says, I will not coach lefties. Like, that's how that's how weird it was. But, you know, now so you can understand why there weren't many lefties back then. But sure. But today, where are the lefties, Scott? That's What's a, going on? That's a good question. You know what? Well, let's take a break here, Steve. I want to talk about your book, uh, QB, okay, great. My Life Behind the Spiral, when we return with Steve Young from the Football Hall of Fame coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. This segment's been brought to you by FamilySearch.org. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. And- 
And we are back. It's America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And this segment of the show is brought to you by MyHeritage.com. And I'm talking with my good friend, football quarterback, Hall of Famer, Steve Young. And uh, Steve, you've written a book about your life called QB, My Life Behind the Spiral. Let's talk a little about that. Well, Scott, you know, I finished playing in 2000 and got married in 2000 and immediately had our first son. And by about 2010, he was in elementary school and uh, he'd come home and he'd say, hey, dad, I heard a story today that you and Joe Montana punched each other in the face. And I'm like, no, we didn't. <laughs> and another, and, you know, and he just kept coming home with story after story. I'm like, Brayden, that's not right. I kind of, to be honest with you, I panicked. I'm like, if I don't do something, then everyone else gets to tell the story. And that I becomes don't the record, the yeah. Truth. Right, that becomes that's the, the record. record, yep. Uh, and so I engaged a friend of mine, Jeff Benedict, who had written some things. And I said, look, Jeff, will you just spend the next few years? Just let's not do it real fast. Just interview me, interview friends. Just try to put together a narrative around what my life was. And so they said, sure. So we just kind of slowly pecked away at it. And the more he did it, the more interested he was in it. And the more I was, because it would bring up other stories and things that I had forgotten. And so we just kind of had this great time putting this together. And then, and then when he said, finally called me, he said, hey, I'm done. I'm like, great. I thought he'd hand me a box full of papers, <laughs> uh, but he handed me chapters of a book. And I said, wow, Jeff, that's, that's great. Thank you. And, you know, we'll see you later. And so that was it. I had my chapters, and I was going to hand them to the kids when it was time or put in there. Oh, so you were keeping you know, this as your own personal exactly. history for your 100%. family. You 100%. Were, you weren't going to share was, that. I didn't keep a journal. I think the anxiety had something to do with it. You know, as we found out in this process, I had like 20 journals. They all had five or six entries, and it would always be the same. Oh, life is hard, and I'm feeling a lot of anxiety. You know, but I wouldn't, yeah. they wouldn't keep up. You know, it's because it just it was the same. It's like a broken record every day. And so this was the replacement for it. And so I had it in my closet, and I was going to hand it to the kids at some point when they got a little older. And then he said, hey, do you mind if I send out a few chapters to some friends? And I said, no, it's fine, you know, whatever. He did that, some common friends. And all of a sudden, I started getting calls. Hey, Steve, you got to publish this. Yeah. You just have to. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> was it too personal no, for No, it wasn't that. I just thought it was too stupid. Not stupid. I'll say the wrong, my wife says I over, over say, say things. <laughs> I thought it was inane. I thought it was great for my kids. But I've seen athletes write books. And it was, you know, in Detroit, it rained, and I threw four touchdowns. It's like, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I, if I was ever going to do something, I wanted it to be useful. I wanted it to be something that people would say, oh, I really appreciated that. That helped me. Or that was... Mm-hmm. You know, and rather than, oh, wow, Steve was a great player. You know, I was like, that just, I, did, I was not interested. And so finally, there was a call I got from a good friend named Bob Gay. You know, we've been in business together and in philanthropy together, and I really respected him. He was just one of those guys that really made a big impact on yeah. my life, a mentor. And he called me. He said, I've seen these chapters, and, and you got to do it. At that moment... I knew that I was going to do it. You know how you have those yeah. feelings, those kind of well, don't confirmation. You think, I mean, you've always been a, a compassionate person, and and being a public person as as you've become and have been for so many decades now. I mean, don't you feel, especially dealing with the anxiety issue, which I wasn't aware of back in the day that you had that issue, but yeah, don't you think yeah. that helps a lot of people to know that despite a very difficult problem that you didn't really share with anybody at that time, you well, still, interesting. you were able to accomplish all you were able yeah. to accomplish despite it. So, Scott, I think that's true. But I shared it with people I lived with. I didn't know what I was sharing. Right. You know what I mean, I was just living it out. My friends, Herm, LJ, guys at college, good friends, they look back and go, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, but they didn't know what to, they didn't know what to call it either. And so I was not, not interested in publishing it because of the personal parts of it. I had no mm-hmm. problem with it. Yeah. People that knew me, I was glad to tell them about it. And so that, I have no problem telling the story. I just wanted it to be useful. And that's what's been nice. People have read it and, you know, parents and it happens all the time. People say, thanks so much because my son has really struggled with anxiety and he feels like a loser and he feels like he can't accomplish. He says, your story told him it was okay. Like, don't you know, you can over, you can do this. And so mm-hmm. um, when I published it, I had no idea that that would be uh, so useful to people. And I'm grateful for that because then it makes it worthwhile to me because I did not want to publish it so that you could say, oh, wow, Steve Young is a great football player. You know, I just, that was, I, <laughs> right. did, I didn't, I didn't really, that was not what I was looking for. So I, I, I'm, I'm gratified that I think that there's people that felt like it was helpful 
And it includes the last couple of chapters are meeting Barb and having kids, and the kids were part of the book. And so, you know, that's fun to connect essentially two separate lives, my life as a football player, my life as a dad and a husband. So that was nice. And how was that division? I mean, you retired in 2000 and your whole life had been playing football. Did that help everything? I mean, when you met Barb at that point, say, okay, my football life is done. Now I'm moving forward. Was there an adjustment period? Well, I didn't mean to have it happen this way, but we we got engaged and I was playing the 1999 season. And then I decided to retire. And so we got married in March, and I retired in June. That just happened. Wow. I didn't mean for that to happen. I didn't plan it. But that and wasn't Brayden, that around the concussions at that point, right? Yeah, but I felt, I mean, I still feel the same way. I felt fine, but yet people were so concerned about me. I was like, why be foolish? And I'm, right. I'm glad. I'm glad I did that. You know, why be foolish? And so uh, I've been foolish long enough, and so that was fine. And then we had children right away, so then you're all in. And then I was doing some ESPN work and around the game, and so the challenge for me was not as great as others were. It's just a cold turkey. There was nothing else new. Like, for me, there was all this new things to do with young kids and taking care of them full-time, and, and I still around football with ESPN, and so I felt less of that burden of falling off the cliff, I call it, when you retire. Yeah, right. Um, and, and it would happen for an athlete much sooner than for the rest of us. Yeah. Uh, but but still, yeah. you know, you really make a good case there that no matter when you retire, you got to have something to retire to. Yeah, my dad always says, you have a dream and a plan. And I say, well, Dad, I'm going to be Roger Staubach. He goes, well, that's a dream. <laughs> it's not a plan. And then when I went pro... I told him, hey, Dad, look at that. The dream and the plan came together. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and he said, no, 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 because the average career is three years. You still need a plan. And so that's why I went to law school while I played. I went, through, I yeah. went to three Super Bowls during the years I was going to law school. Because even when I retired at 38 years old, my dad said, what's the plan? And I yep. said, well, the plan is that I have my law degree. I'm going to go get something done. And, uh, and it was really true. You, I played for 17, 18 years. And I still needed a plan. And so I'm really grateful to my dad. My one boy wants to be a professional gamer. I'm going to make <laughs> millions of dollars playing video games. And the sad thing is this really is, has happened. Like, it does happen. Yes, There's I guys know. guys that are doing that. Yep. And I said, well, that, son, is what you call the ultimate dream, all right? Yeah. <laughs> to sit in your basement and make millions of dollars. But that's a dream. And I use my same and I dad, and I know, that's a dream. What's the plan? And so my kids are so sick of me talking yeah, about dreams because and you've turned you know? into your father right i have turned into my father i am grit <laughs> i am much i'm much tougher than i am good <laughs> he is steve young he's the football hall of famer he's the author of the book uh, qb my life behind the spiral you can find it on amazon.com and uh, all other great places too like uh, barnes and noble and Steve, I'm disappointed that we just don't have more time because we yeah. got, we got a lot to catch up on. Yeah, we it's do. been a long time, but thank well, you well, so much for your time I and bet, uh, sure. sharing it with us. You know, I think what you say here about writing your own story, being of benefit to others, that's the reason. That's the motivation that people need to do that. And, uh, and so that you can be of benefit to your descendants, not just your kids, but your grandkids yeah, you that know, come I, I, down I, the line. It's funny you mentioned that, Scott, because... I'd never thought about that till that second. You just said it five seconds ago. That oh my gosh, this book maybe in a couple of generations it'll be useful. Oh, and that, absolutely. That, I never even thought. I never, I've been such a, a myopic view of you know kind of just right now. Uh, I didn't even think about that. So you're right. I, that is a, I'm so glad to have that in place for even further generations. That's great. Well, awesome to talk All to right, you, buddy. Steve. All and right. Do you well, take care. For inspiring me. Yeah. <laughs> Great show. All right, bye. Thank you so much. Take Steve care. Young on Extreme Genes, right. America's Family History Show. Well, Genies, my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. 
world and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now my heritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Legacy Tree Genealogists is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've been working with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins or heirs to property. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client rated genealogy firm call us toll free at 1-800-818-1476 call now or register online to get a free estimate learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at legacytree.com slash blog even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems legacy tree genealogists we do the research you enjoy the discoveries legacytree.com And we are back talking preservation with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, your preservation authority on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, and ExtremeGenes.com. My name is Fisher, the Radio Root Sleuth, and this segment is brought to you by 23andMe.com DNA. And Tom, it's good to see you again. Good to be here. We have an email from Howard Long, and Howard's saying, I've got a VHS tape that has come loose from the core. And I think he's meaning hub, right? Isn't that the yeah, word? Yeah, it's a hub, exactly. For these old VHS tapes from way back in the 1980s <laughs> and 1990s? Yeah, the old VHS tapes, they degrade. There's nothing you can do about it. When things were made back in those days, they didn't know that the Mylar tape they were going to use would crack so easily and pull off so easily. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you can play the tape, everything's fine. Then you fast rewind it or fast forward it, and it just snaps. You have to bring it in to us to let us fix it for you. If you want to try and do it yourself, you can. However, this isn't for the faint of heart. You need to really (laughs) know what you're doing. You need to be really good with your hands. If you're not good at doing models and things like that, you don't want to touch this. Really? Oh, yeah. People end up ruining them. Is this the thing where you basically replace it with an empty shell? Sometimes you use a new shell. If the shell's in good condition, we don't. We take it apart real carefully. And if it's got screws in it, then it's usually not a problem. And what we have to do is we have to usually reattach the leader to the hub. And you can't take out the pin, put the tape in, and put the pin back in because a machine does that under high pressure, so you can't do it. We actually double tape it. We tape the leader back to the hub. Then we bend the tape around and tape the other side, too, because otherwise, if it's pulling too much, it's going to pull the tape right off. So we have to put tape on both sides, so it's probably over everybody's head by now already. Right. Yes. <laughs> so it's something you don't want to do yourself unless you're really, really handy. And if it's something you're going to do yourself and you are handy, send me an email at asktom at tmcplace.com, and I'll teach you how you can do it. But it's not for the faint of heart. Like I say, you need to make sure you do it right, or you could totally damage your tape. And once you damage the control track, 
the tape's worthless. So you're saying then if you took the tape out, you couldn't, like a cassette audio tape, transfer it over to some other shell very easily? Well, you can, but the problem is it's come off the hub. So if you just put it in another shell, you have the same thing. You have a brand new shell, but it's still not attached to a hub. Mm -hmm. If something's been smashed and the shell's damaged, then you'll have to replace a shell. And if the hub's damaged, then you've got to replace that too. And they just get more and more and more complicated. But if it's something you want to tackle yourself, knock yourself out. If you're in the situation where the tape's actually broken, and it hasn't come off the hub, make sure when you splice it, you splice it on the inside of the tape, not the tape that's facing you. Right. Because otherwise, it can get caught on the heads in your VCR and ruin your VCR by breaking the oh, heads. There's a lot of danger here. Oh, it is. It Warning is very Will dangerous. Robinson. I, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. It's something, you know, step away from the tape if you don't know what you're doing. Send it to us or somebody you know you can trust. It's not something like, oh, I think I can fix this old wrist watch, and you open it, yeah. springs go everywhere. <laughs> and sometimes people bring us a tape not telling us there's anything wrong with it. And it's like, well, the door's not open. Something's weird here. So we call them and say, hey, there's something wrong with your tape. Oh, yeah, sure. If you need to fix it, fix it. Still not telling us anything. We open it, and things are missing. And then obviously we know the customers got into it. So if you do that, tough it out. <laughs> Tell the people, this is what I did. I'm sorry. I screwed it up. Exactly. Okay. So we won't damage your tape any further. And this is really illustrative of how early, how quickly you want to get this stuff done because as time goes on, more and more of these things will degrade, right? Oh, absolutely. In fact, that's a good point that you brought up. You know, we're always searching for new equipment, and it's really funny. We see stuff when we bought them when they were brand new or maybe like $1,200, and now they're $3,000 for the same machine now used because they're rare. Right. And now we're finding we can't even get them for parts. We buy ones that say parts only, which is fine. We might steal some things off of it. But we can't even find them now. So one day, you're not going to be able to do a grade A transfer like we do nowadays. So in 10, 20 years, you'll have to go through a computer system, which isn't anywhere near as good. Oh, boy. Hopefully, they'll get better with that over time. All right. More questions from our listeners coming up for you next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Com. Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family history research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities. And it's free. Sign up for The Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Facebook page. And when you do, you'll receive David Allen Lambert's top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Sign up today for the Weekly Genie.
And we're back for our final segment of Extreme Genes for this week, America's Family History Show and ExtremeGenes.com. And we love talking preservation because that's really where your family history all begins. And we heard from Dan Pritchard, and Dan says he's not sure what DPI to use when he scans and also wants to know about getting a scanner, but no more than 300 bucks because the wife's just put her foot down, Tom. Kaboom. So, kaboom. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think if, if it's that's the case, they'd probably be better off renting, wouldn't you think? Oh, absolutely, because you can go to Easy Photo Scan and rent a unit for about $400, or only $100 more, and it's super high quality. It's got the flatbed scanner. It's got the auto feeder. It'll go in and do your scrapbooks where you have a whole bunch of photos together, and it'll go and separate them. So just get yourself organized and just rent one of these. It's like for a week, right? And, oh, yeah. And so you do that. You get your cousins in there, your siblings in there, your parents in there, and everybody splits the cost, and it could be 100 bucks a piece. Oh, yeah. If you only have four people involved, you know, you're looking at 100 bucks a person, and that gives you a whole week. And Easy Photo Scan is really good. They don't charge you for the day it arrives and the day you ship it back. So you get it for a full seven days, and you can do a lot of scanning in seven days. This is a great opportunity to really help yourself, help others, and it's going to cost you probably less. If this isn't going to work for you, then you need to buy a better one and then resell it on eBay when you're done and maybe find a good used one on eBay. But don't cut yourself short and spend $300 on a scanner from Office Depot or something. I think this all kind of ties into what Lisa Garcia asked us in an email here, too. She says she lives in Dallas, Texas, and would love to organize a scanning party there. And she and her husband are celebrating their 40th anniversary coming up on May 6th of next year. Congratulations, Lisa. That's an accomplishment these days, right? And she talked about using Google Photos to store them. And what are your thoughts on, on storage? I always tell people I always want to overcompensate. I want to have things on a disk. I want to have things on a hard drive. I want to have even a portable USB drive. And I want to have two clouds. And most people have two clouds now. And most people don't have enough storage. It's going to cost them. You can go to Dropbox. You can go to Google Drive, all these different things. And with small enough accounts, there's not even a charge for it. And she also mentioned organizing it. And I've said this many times. I preach the gospel of heritage collectors. It is the best software in the world if you're PC-based. It is so awesome. They have free webinars every month to teach you how to do things. I've had so many people call me giddy and say, oh, I got my Heritage Collector. It's, you know, it's so much better than you even said it was. It does all these kind of cool things, and it's amazing, and you don't have to spend a ton of money. You can get a basic system for under $100. In fact, they'll even send you a free introduction, which you can actually click on our website and find it, and they'll send you this to try it, see what you like. And then you buy modules as you need them or what you want. You don't have to buy the whole Cadillac. If you just need the leather seats, get leather seats. It's really, <laughs> really awesome. I mean, we're in Christmas season right now, but think, oh, it's too late for Christmas. So big deal. You're going to be taking a lot of pictures at Christmas. People are going to show up at your different festivities and have photos that they want to get scanned. And for a lot of people that want to do scanning and don't have a ton of stuff and don't want to buy an expensive scanner, don't forget that you can use a shot box as a scanner. Get a shot box for 200 bucks, and then you can not only take pictures of your photos that you want to scan, it'll automatically crop them. You can shoot three-dimensional things of, you know, grandpa's golden booties or whatever and it is just you know in the old days i remember my grandparents had their booties and they had them broad oh that's it okay i i I had a completely different picture in my mind i'm really (laughs) i'm really glad we went there tom you great to see you again we're out of time we'll see you again next week my pleasure well genies that is it for this week and thanks once again to football hall of famer steve young for coming on and doing two segments with us this week talking about his autobiography some of his answers ancestry a lot of fun if you missed any of it or you want to hear it again or share it with your friends just listen to the podcast and of course our patron club members get it first you can sign up at extremegenes.com just click on the patrons club it costs you less than like a pair of men's socks talk to you again next week thanks for joining us and remember as far as everyone knows we're a nice normal family